hi and welcome to another video so around four or five days ago i posted a igtv video on my instagram profile which i will link up here discussing my top 10 fragrances everyone who knows me knows i love joe malone but i couldn't be specifically biased to joe malone however due to requests i've decided to do a separate joe malone dedicated video what some of you may not know is that when I was starting out as a makeup girl, I was also a fragrance girl as well at one point and did work for Jo Malone for a temporary period, which meant that I got a little bit of training and got to know more about the brand, which I love so much today. The key facts about Jo Malone, one, it's owned by Estee Lauder, two, it was founded by a woman called Jo Malone, who is the founder. However, she subsequently sold her company to Estee Lauder, and that's why it's now called Jo Malone London. Three, the fragrances are colognes. It's supposed to be a unisex brand, so they don't specifically market one of their fragrances towards men or some fragrances towards women like most fragrance brands do. Everything that's available in their collection is non-gender specific. Jo Malone obviously is a London UK brand. Jo Malone London compares itself to Savile Row as they say that the fragrances are tailor made for you specifically. The main reason why? The fragrances are so simple and are very ingredient driven that they are perfect for layering. So often you can layer two, three fragrances together and it still works harmoniously without being too cloying or sickly. They call it fragrance combining and I think altogether there are like 400 combinations and that could have increased in the last couple of years considering they have brought out more fragrances. I love Jo Malone because it's very light, it's very simple, whatever their title is that's what you smell and that is what is at the heart of its ingredients. I hate sickly fragrances, I like fragrances that give me some energy, that are citrusy, that are fresh that are lively but not sickly or cloying. As a result of it being on the lighter and fresher side, I do find that the fragrances don't last as long, which is probably the only negative point I would say about Jo Malone, but even then, for me, that's not a negative in the slightest. They do say that the fragrances last between four to six hours. However, they normally recommend layering it with body creams and their body oils to ensure the fragrance lasts for longer. Jo Malone also do really, really nice travel size fragrances. So if you wanted to top up, say for the evening after work, then they do have handbag friendly travel sizes, which aren't heavy at all. As I explained in my previous fragrance videos, there are four main categories of fragrances or that fragrances fall under, which is oriental, so spicy, woody, floral, and fresh. So fresh can include light floral and fruits or citrus. In the Jo Malone world, they have six categories, so they've bro broken it down more specifically into citrus, floral, light floral, spicy, woody, and fruity. I can guarantee you there is no one on this earth that does not love Jo Malone. So as I explained in my last IGTV video, there are three elements to a perfume, the top note, the heart note, and the base note. So the top note is when you first spray the perfume and you get the first hit, that is the top note. That's also what will evaporate the quickest. Often top notes are like citrusy scents or light floral scents. The heart of the fragrance is what is called the personality of the fragrance. So that's the main element that you will smell or the main ingredient that you will smell during the day. But what really lasts is the base note. That is the lasting note. And that's why often the base notes are heavier. So they would be the woodier scents or the spicier scents. So Jo Malone has so many iconic fragrances and it was so hard to choose what to talk about, but I wanted to ultimately show you what I actually have in my collection just to prove I am a genuine Jo Malone fan. I think it's very easy to show you pictures or images. I wanted to show you my own personal collection. So even though this was literally like choosing my favourite child, I think I narrowed my number one Jo Malone fragrance down to this beauty, English Pear and Freesia. So as you can see, it's empty. It will need a top up very soon. Um, but this is just a, such a classic fragrance. This is the kind of fragrance that you could give somebody and they would be super grateful to wear because it's such a beautiful mellow fragrance. Or you could wear on your wedding day or it's some, something that you could give to your mother, mother-in-law. It's so, so versatile. So the top note of this is King William Pear. The heart note is Freesia and the base note is Patchouli. This fragrance falls into the fruity family, 
but it's so hard to explain. It's not like a childish fruity, it's a grown up fruity. And there's something so gorgeous about this fragrance. You will know if you have smelt this fragrance. The best way I can describe it is when you're walking through an English meadow or field and you come across a field of random flowers and you just suddenly, because of the wind, get a waft of all these like floral scents which are so pleasant, not overpowering in the slightest and it just instantly makes you want to close your eyes and just take everything in. That's what this fragrance smells like to me. So if this fragrance is my number one, everything is probably going to be a joint number two. Next up is the Blackberry and Bay fragrance, which again falls into the fruity category. At its top note, it has blackberry, obviously. In its heart note, it's got bay leaves, and as its base note, it's got cedar wood. The best way I would describe this fragrance, you can definitely smell the blackberry again, but it's not that like, there's no like overpowering sweetness to it. You get the hit of blackberry, but underneath it, there is definitely a muskier tone. And if I could describe it, it would almost be like, you know when you smell incense sticks, but not an overpowering incense stick. There's that slight aromaticness to an incense stick. So that's what I would describe the base note as. But again, it's such a gorgeous and grown up fruity scent. Next up is the orange blossom fragrance, which falls into the floral category. As you can see, again, I've used pretty much all of it up, but I recently purchased a candle in this fragrance and I absolutely love the smell of oranges and lemons unlike the lime basil and mandarin scent which is so so famous and that has quite like a tartness to it and a sharpness to it this one has a little bit more sweetness to it and it's a little bit more mellow and its top note is clementine flower and its heart note is white lilac and its base note is orris wood when I smell this fragrance it just reminds me of a fresh orange. When you just first peel that orange and you get that hit of zest, that's what it smells like. And that's why I love it as a room fragrance because it instantly freshens up the room and it's not like, again, cloying or heavy. Another firm favorite of mine is the wood, sage and sea salt. This is so nice to layer with more of a sweet or floral tone. At its top note, it's got amber seeds, heart note is sea salt and base note is sage. This was inspired by the windswept shores of England. And as you know, there's a lot of windswept shores in England. But when they give you that imagery, you can really imagine walking through the beach, like an empty beach, and having the wind just blowing in your hair, gray cloudy day, slight drizzle. There's that smell of sea salt in the air. That's what I think of when I smell this scent. And maybe this is just me, I feel like there's something a little bit chocolatey about this scent, even though there isn't a chocolate ingredient, there's something a little bit like chocolatey and warm about this fragrance. So Jo Malone have Colognes and Cologne Intense. So Cologne Intense, like the name suggests, are more intense fragrances. The fragrance I love the most in the Cologne Intense collection is the Velvet Rose and Oud. Everything about this tells me that I shouldn't like it because it's got, um, I do like rose scents, but I do think that sometimes rose can be a little bit on the heavy side and I do not like oud normally. However, there is something that really works about this fragrance and is so decadent and delicious. It's just such a gorgeous scent. It is on the sweeter side, but again, not to a point where it's sickly. And trust me, I'm somebody that's got quite like a strong nose like a dog and a weak stomach, not good combination. I've had fragrances on like new fragrances or smell other people's fragrances and have physically felt sick, no joke. So if I can stomach this and think that it's sweet but not like heavy, if it works for me, it'll work for you, for sure. So its top note is clove, interestingly. Its heart note is damask rose and its base note is oud. Moving on to limited editions, I always keep an eye out for limited editions from Jo Malone just because they can tend to sell out super quick and once it's gone, it's gone. One of my favourite limited edition fragrances has to be Nashi Blossom. So Nashi Blossom is based on the Nashi tree which produces Nashi pears. You see a theme here of fragrances I like. Jo Malone first brought this out many many moons ago and I remember 
just buying the smaller like 30 mil fragrance like this size thinking let me try it first and if i like it then i'll get the bigger size of course i ended up loving it using it running out of it and then by the time that i went to buy the full size it was out and i remember just kicking myself because i thought oh, i should have just gotten the bigger size i should have just gotten the bigger size and it's now never going to come back because it's limited edition however i was lucky when i think just a few years ago they re-released the nashi blossom i don't know if it's exactly the same but it's similar if not the same and i straight away got the 100 mil without hesitation again this falls into the fruity category this top note is lemon the heart note is nashi blossom and the base note is white musk and although pear can be sweet because obviously it's a fruit there is a crispness to it and i think that comes from the top scent of lemon but then there's floral scent about it because it ultimately is a blossom but it's such a beautiful fragrance so clean so elegant and again i've been to be honest, I get complimented on a lot of my Joe Malone fragrances, but I do get complimented on this fragrance, as I, I do with the English Pear and Freesia. So maybe it's the pear scent that people like as well. Next up, it's the Yuja Cologne. So this Yuja Cologne, I spoke about um, in more length in my IGTV video from four days ago. I love this scent just because it's firstly so unusual to use Yuja as an ingredient. It's specific to Asia. Um, as I explained in my other video, yuzu is the Japanese version and yuja is the Korean version and it's sort of like a, a lemon citrus fruit um, but it doesn't produce as much liquid, if that makes sense, as an actual lemon. Its top note is yuja obviously, its heart note is clary sage and its base note is fir balsam. This is one of their recent, um, more recent releases and obviously falls into the citrus category. It's a lemony scent, but there's a lot more sweetness to it. So unlike the lime basil and mandarin, which is again quite tart and sharp, this is more sweet. Now, moving on to fragrances that I didn't necessarily dislike, but I wasn't as obsessed or crazy about. And it breaks my heart to even say this because it is Jo Malone, but I still wanted to share it with you to give you a balanced review of the brand. So first up is the Agro and Cucumber. There's something about this fragrance that I like and there's something about it that prevents me for, from reaching for it. I haven't used this in absolutely ages. It falls into the citrus family, but to me it doesn't smell citrusy. And it's on the sweeter side, but almost like bittersweet, if that makes any sense at all. For me, it's on the point, on the tip of the point where it slightly starts to get cloying. Its top note is bergamot, its heart note is cucumber, and its base note is beeswax. Now for me, those top three fragrances really surprised me because I love all those fragrances individually put together, but clearly not. I love bergamot. Again, it's a citrus fruit. It's very fresh, and I have other fragrances that have bergamot in it and absolutely adore them. Cucumber is obviously very fresh. There's nothing to dislike about it. And then beeswax has tones of honey. So again, I love honey. I just don't know what it is about this fragrance where I'm not 100% sold on it. Let me know your thoughts. Maybe you have tried it and you love it, or maybe there's something that you don't like about it either. I would love to know what you think about this fragrance. Next up is the Tuba Rose Angelica in the Cologne Intense fragrance range. Again, there's something about this fragrance that I'm not 100% sure about. There's elements that I like, there's elements I don't like. However, I have friends that absolutely love this fragrance. But obviously fragrance is very personal, is very much to the individual's taste, but this is just not for me. There's top notes of Angelica, heart note of tuberose, and base note of amberwood. Although it is a predominantly floral scent, I feel like it could also fall into the spicy category as well. It's described as sensual, it's described as spicy, and it is a nice fragrance, but there's something I think it's the base note that I'm not so keen on, the amber wood. It, I do like musk, but I don't like too much of it, if that makes sense. It's that sort of fragrance where I wouldn't wear during the day, I wouldn't wear on a summer's day, or even a summer's evening, and I think I would rather like spritz it on the odd occasion in the sort of autumn winter when the weather's a bit cooler. But again, let me know your thoughts on Chuba Rose Angelica, maybe there's guys out there who Maybe you're obsessed with it, maybe it's your go-to fragrance, I hope I haven't offended you, 
but um, let me know your thoughts on this one if it's something that you have tried. Another fragrance in the limited edition range that I'm not 100% sure about is the Nettle and Wild Akalia fragrance. It's got a top note of Wild Akalia, heart note of Nettle and base note of Vetiver. When you smell it, there is a really, really lovely fragrance to it and it's obviously quite sweet, but then there's something else that comes through, which I think is kind of peppery, that kind of spoils it for me. And I think the pepperiness comes from the nettle, which defeats the whole purpose of getting a fragrance called Nettle and Wild Akalia. But it's that kind of fragrance where you go, you sniff it and you go, hmm, you know, it's like, it smells nice at first and then this other fragrance peeps through it and you're like, hmm, you know, I don't know. There's something that I'm not 100% sure about. So again, it's a really nice fragrance, but I don't tend to gravitate towards it, unfortunately. Next up, I have two fragrances that were released, I think in 2018, as part of her English Fields collection. I will start with the Green Wheat and Meadow Sweet fragrance. Its top note is Green Wheat, its heart note is Grapefruit, and its base note is Meadow Sweet. I don't know what I was thinking when I bought this fragrance. I was clearly just on a fragrance high and <laughs> must have just purchased it for the sake of purchasing it. It's just not my kind of fragrance. It's quite sweet. But again, there's something about it. There's a note in there that I don't, I can't quite identify, but I'm not so keen on. This fragrance is described as spring, having a zest of grapefruit, which all sounds great and appealing to me. But when I sniff it, I don't know if I necessarily think of spring. It's quite sweet. And secondly, I can't, I don't get the grapefruit hit. And I normally love grapefruit in my fragrances. So unfortunately, that's another miss for me. And the other fragrance in the English Fields collection is the Honey and Crocus. It's got top notes of honey and crocus, heart note of lavender, and interestingly, a base note of almond milk. So it's suitable for lactose intolerant people. I do like this fragrance. I feel like I much prefer it to the green wheat and meadow sweet. But I think what it is, is I like the honey element to it and it really does smell of honey. And I think that's what drew me to it in the first instance. But it's a tad too sweet for me. I know I sound really fussy, but it's a tad too sweet for me. I, I can smell the almond milk. It sounds crazy, but like with the honey, I can smell, it's not like um, honey in a honey jar. It's almost like a honey cream or like a creamy honey, if that makes any sense at all. That's what it smells like to me. And it is a nice fragrance and I do enjoy it, but it's definitely not my go-to out of the Jo Malone fragrances. Last but not least, I think it was a couple of years ago when Jo Malone released a special limited edition collection called the Rare Teas Collection. So this is a presentation box. Guys, this is how you know I am obsessed with this brand and absolutely bloody ridiculous. So with the lid off, that is all the perfumes in the collection. These are obviously like the miniature sizes, but I kind of wanted all of them in my collection just so that I could have them. I thought in the worst case scenario that I don't use them. I thought they would look really nice on my mantelpiece. Oh, I'm so ashamed to say this. However, if you do like the full fragrance, I don't even know if they still sell it to be honest. But I remember that the bigger sizes, I think they were like bigger than the 100 mil. I think it was somewhere along the lines of 175 mil. I think they were going for 240 pounds. So it's really expensive. But if you look into how they managed to get the fragrance and the pure, almost like the purification to get that scent as close to the tea leaf as possible, you'll understand why it's so expensive. So I decided to get all six fragrances and this was a limited edition set where I think it costs like 250 in itself. Crazy, I know. But in my defense, one, I think like 100 milliliter bottle from Tom Ford is the same amount. Whereas I've got a whole collection. And I think the reason that it was so popular at the time is because no one had done it yet. No one had thought about making tea into a scent. And it was such an unusual idea, it was almost like a, a niche idea that when it first launched it was bound to make waves. At the same time, tea isn't so odd that you'd be thinking, oh I don't want to wear that. And how many times have we had tea, smelt the aroma of the tea and gone, mm, that's really beautiful. Or, ooh, there's a floral scent to it, I do, I don't know about you. Maybe I'm just very like, 
knobby but often I smell tea and I'm like oh it smells lemony it smells floral and those are the notes that you often get naturally in tea so it only makes sense to make it into fragrances so without going into loads of detail this is the golden needle tea I think many of these are probably based on like oriental teas this is the midnight black tea this is the oolong tea I've definitely tried that tea before it's just very um very Chinese tea Oolong tea is not as sweet as that, but anyway. Then you've got the jade leaf tea. This is the Darjeeling tea, which I'm sure all of you are familiar with. And this is the silver needle tea. With the silver needle tea, I believe that it's picked, hand-picked at dawn when it's at its peak of freshness. So you can imagine why these are so expensive, not only to drink, but obviously to bottle and put it into a fragrance. Have I ever worn these fragrances, I hear you ask me? No. Um, I just feel like it's too special to use up, which sound, might sound crazy, but I also like the way that it's presented. I like the idea of having it on my mantelpiece and just using it as decoration. And for me, more than anything, it's more like a collector's item rather than a fragrance, if that makes sense. Like I said, Jo Malone have other items in their collection, like candles, diffusers, room sprays, you name it, they've got everything. And I'm just as much of a fan of their candles as I am their fragrances. I wanted to just quickly give a shout out to other fragrances in the Jo Malone collection that I haven't got on me today, but I have used up in the past. So I thought it was only fair that I mentioned it. So Pomegranate Noir is a very plummy, seductive scent. Nectarine Blossom and Honey is, is a sweet scent, but again, it's not too sickly. There's something so beautiful about it. And if I could describe it as a word, I would say it's a very pretty scent. Wild Bluebell is a very delicate floral scent, and I really enjoyed using that when I had it. Peony and Blush Suede is such a popular fragrance. For me, it's on the sweeter side, but I still really enjoy it. And I know it's so popular amongst women. And I have mentioned the Lime Basil and Mandarin before, but as much as I do like it, I think it's more of a masculine scent. I know all the colognes are supposed to be unisex, but let's admit it. I would say Peony and Blush Suede is definitely more of a feminine fragrance, and then Lime Basil and Mandarin is more of a masculine fragrance. So if you want to get a gift from Jo Malone for a man and want it to be a success, I would definitely say Lime Basil and Mandarin is a sure fire hit. It's, they're going to like it. And secondly, I would say the Earl Grey and Cucumber, the one that I wasn't so sure about. I know for a fact that would smell really good on a man. Those are really good ideas for gifting options. I know that was quite a lengthy Jo Malone video, but I kind of wanted to do it justice and really get into the nitty gritty of it. I would love for you to share what your favourite Jo Malone fragrances are. What are your thoughts on my favourites and the ones that perhaps I wasn't so sure about? Maybe you can give me a bit more information on that and why you enjoy it perhaps. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a lovely day and stay safe.